Hello everyone, welcome to this week's GT Sport Daily C race review where we're going to take Group 4 cars around Dragon Trail Seaside. So there's lots of frenetic action in this one and we've got a couple of YouTubers that will feature within the races and we have a death of course by the chicane. So here's the detailed settings for the race, very quickly, 10 laps, fuel times 3, tyres at times 4, medium and hard tyres both available with those racing hard tyres being mandatory. If you watch the strategy guide, uh, earlier in the week then you will know that the no stop is around about 2-3 to three seconds quicker than the one stop just due to that pit stop taking around 10.5 seconds and you just can't quite make up that time uh, with the medium tyres medium tyres only lasting about 6-7 uh, to seven laps before they kind of come fairly close in lap time to the hard tyres you can make the one stop work if you can get out in front with the medium tyres and make the most of them if you're a little bit further in the pack you're very very likely to get caught up in a lot of uh, uh, action, overtaking, getting re-overtaken, stuff like that, uh, so if you can just get to the front, bolt on the mediums, then the one stop as possible, but from my experience, the no stop definitely coming out on top more often than not. So the car we're in is my favourite Group 4 car of the moment, it's the Aston Martin V8 Vanquish, uh, it's not a Vanquish, it's a Vantage isn't it? Uh, very very solid car, uh, just Again, very much like the Jaguar, whenever I talk about the Jaguar, just no surprises with it. Uh, there's lots of TTs in this race, but they do tend to sort of fade quite dramatically towards the end, and uh, Dodge Vipers were the other popular car. So in this race, we are starting way at the back in 16th place. We only actually set a couple of very, very poor qualifying laps before we jumped into this race, so starting all the way down in 16th. Uh, not a whole lot armed over the first five laps of this race so we're actually going to skip to the middle of lap five you can see we've actually lost a further place uh, i'm going to assume probably to uh, maybe a driver on medium tires i'm not sure but we are part of a fairly big group of cars here uh, there's been a lot of jostling for positions but somehow everybody's managed to sort of avoid picking up a penalty uh, generally getting everything sorted out pretty much uh, before we go through the chicane of death uh, this example here though is going to be a little bit different I get caught out by the Dane braking and we go almost side by side and almost both get through without any kind of uh, misdemeanors but unfortunately we hit the ball pretty hard here, somebody else has hit the wall, picked up a two second parent as well and just look at this gaggle of cars come into the last corner, uh, just a respite for disaster to be perfectly honest with you, uh, now I was really only sort of doing this race to pick up some uh, some speed just get myself warmed up a little bit so I've decided I no longer want to be a part of that group I'm going to jump in and put on a set of medium tyres just to get out some clear track and just uh, get myself up to speed for the next one if I was going to do the next race however such as the fighting amongst the cars towards the back of the grid and the fact that we're now on the medium tyres that we very very quickly caught up to the group of cars we were originally part of there's going to be some shenanigans down here towards the end of the first sector now the TT goes wide, re-enters the track, hits the Dane in front of us and he picks up a 4 second penalty. Now it is unfortunate, but you should really try to predict that car coming back on. Move slightly to the right hand side of the track and try and avoid the car re-entering. He didn't really kind of take any avoiding action. It's not a fair penalty, but we do know that that's a penalty you can pick up in this game. It's a car re-entering the track, you make contact with them, the game deems you to be uh, responsible for the, their accident and you can pick up a penalty. So, we, we actually, we seen the car re-entering, we kept our car to the right hand side of the track and managed to avoid that contact. Anyway, back to the race in action, we overtake the Dane into the hairpin there, we've got much better tyres, much better traction coming out. We're in the slipstream of Caracuto GT, it's, uh, that's Carlos, who often comments on my video, so nice to see you in a race again, my man. Uh, we've got a slipstream here, come down towards last corner, we're looking to maybe go for an overtake on Carlos, but we hit the wall and we said we're going to come under pressure from an Italian uh, and a Dodge Viper. He's uh, going to fire it down the inside, he's not going to go anywhere near to making the apex, we see him, we give him loads of space and he still gives us a fairly hefty punt uh, and kind of manages to overtake us on the exit. Unfortunate for him though, Carlos keeps his car to the left hand side, lets me pick up the slipstream and out drag him down to the line, so thank you very much to Carlos for... Uh, seeing that there, giving me the slipstream and let me pick up a, a magical 13th position in our first foray into this race. So let's see if we can do a little bit better in this second one. We're actually starting this one in 7th place, so we concentrated on qualifying a little bit more. 
We've got ourselves down to a 144.4, which by no means at this point is a particularly great lap. Uh, always a circuit I seem to struggle on, even though the car feels good, the lap feels good. I just don't seem to sort of set a time and sort of put myself in the kind of leaderboards where I would normally expect to be. Uh, I am getting a little bit quicker though as the week goes on, I'm a little bit more committed for the chicane of death, which seems to be a sort of bit of an Achilles heel for me on the track where I'm just a little bit too cautious. Anyway, this second race now underway, as I said, starting this one in 7th place, we've got a couple of uh, fellow YouTubers, I guess I can say now, being a YouTuber myself. In this one we've got uh, Iris, and uh, I think he's standing in 10th place, and we've got uh, Karif Kart up in 3rd place. And uh, we're going to see a bit of both of them as this race progresses. So into the first corner we come here, very very cautious into the first corner, you can just see that gap open up to the cars in front. And we're immediately under pressure from the Spaniard behind us. Again, we're going for the no stop in this one, so we're on the hard tyres. Uh, just going to try and keep our nose clean as this race progresses, see what happens as it unfolds, let people's tyres wear down, take advantage of the fact that we are pretty good at looking after our tyres and always seem to be strong towards the end of the race. And uh, avoid those penalties and, of course, avoid death at the chicane that we're going to go through here for the first time in this race. Everybody making it through relatively cleanly by the looks of it. Uh, overtaken by the Spaniard there down into the hairpin. I'm pretty sure he's on medium tyres at this point. But the TTs are just very, very strong over the opening laps anyway. That it's quite hard to defend against them, even if they are on the same tyres as you. So a big feature of this race, as far as I can see anyway, is that the slipstream is, obviously I've discussed it in an earlier video, just being so very strong that when you get down towards the end of these... Uh, long straight sections, cars are side by side, they're going to be fighting into all the corners and holding each other up, so really my tact in these early stages of the race is just to not really get involved in any of that. Uh, avoid penalties, if somebody wants to go for the overtake on me, I don't make it too difficult for them. Uh, perfect example there, you can see how much these guys are holding each other up as they go side by side through uh, turns 1 and 2 and into this fast right hand kink. Uh, as I said, I think the Audi TT of the Spaniard is on medium tyre, so he's making progress through the pack. So jump forward here to the last corner of lap number two. You can see we're just keeping our nose out of all this mayhem that's going on. Just letting these guys fight and bump each other. Let them pick up the penalties if there's penalties to be dished out. Yeah, we're in the slipstream here of Karif Kart, uh, another YouTuber. Do take his channel out if you haven't already. A yeah, bit of a sticky situation here because we can't really go anywhere, we've got a car immediately behind us and we've got a car to our uh, right hand side which is actually King Ears. King Ears is a subscriber and somebody who comments on uh, a lot of my videos as well, makes a very nice move around the outside of me into turn number one. Yeah, seen him just in time there to give him the space. Yeah, again, the Audi TT very very strong and hard to do much against in these opening laps anyway so I wasn't going to fight that too hard. Going to get that position back though on King Ears as he kind of Seems to get maybe caught out by the slipstream into the hairpin. Runs a little bit of a tad wide. Gives us the inside line for the first part of the chicane and very sensibly backs out to get into single file as you always should do for the second part of this chicane. Yeah, it certainly cannot go through here too wide uh, without a huge amount of compliance from both drivers which you're just not going to get, let's be honest. But we've got a just about dropped out the slipstream here but again they're going to go side by side into the last corner. King is actually maybe going to get caught out by our braking there in the Aston Martin. You do have to brake quite late into that last corner. Uh, obviously the TT, one of its strengths is its brakes as well. So he kind of, I think he more took avoidant action and went for the overtake. However, that has compromised us out and we've got another YouTuber of EDAs right behind us in the Dodge Viper. And we're going to have a very interesting situation here through turns 1 and 2. EDAs is going to go for the overtake. We've got King Ears on our outside. King Ears backs out of it. Me and EDAs go... Side by side through turns 1 and 2, he's in the Dodge Viper, it's a slightly better drive out the second uh, corner, not a good corner to go side by side here, so we back out of it, let him just jump ahead again, we're only on lap 4, there's no point uh, compromising our races too much at this point uh, by having an accident or just trying to go side by side through every corner in the track. Uh, as I said, this race kind of is all about maintaining position, keeping your patience, keeping your tyres alive and making your moves over the last few laps. So here he is, is going to make a bit of an error there through the S's, gets it a little bit wrong, it's going to pick up a half second penalty for his troubles, which is a bit unfortunate. We're going to have the run down the outside here, 
Uh, Rory's going to do the correct thing here because he knows he's going to have dirty tyres into this corner, so he lets us pass, breaks nice and early. Again, see the sense of not fighting too much into these corners, uh, much like myself, I think his sort of tact is to sort of do the nose stop, keep his nose clean, and pick up the pieces towards the end of the race. So we'll fast forward here down to the first corner of lap number five. We're back behind Karif. The Spaniard and the Italian are going to have a bit of a tete la tete into turns one and two. It's going to sort of see everybody close up very much on each other. Nowhere to go here though. We're just coming off the throttle a little bit again. Do not want to go side by side with somebody through that corner if you can really avoid that. Karif sort of has to take a look up the inside of the Jaguar. That gives us a little bit of a run down the outside. And we've just got enough track and enough momentum here up the hill with the power of the Aston Martin uh, to try and get into the inside of the McLaren for the first part of the SEC here. And we've got that move made. And that's us up into 6th place. Up ahead, the Spaniard and the TT has got it all wrong. I think he probably gives the Italian a little bit of a scare in the Jaguar as well. We all have to kind of slow down to try and avoid uh, getting collected by the Spaniard coming back onto the track. Everybody makes it through safely. But that is seen us up into 5th place now as we reach the halfway point of this race. Uh, Zfix McSteer there in the Jaguar is going to go a little bit deep into the, the hairpin there. Maybe not quite adapting for the tyres as they start to wear. Uh, we kind of had a run there through the first part that she came, but again, just bide her time, let the Italian take the, the racing line. He's not made a great job there though with the chicane of death, and that's going to give us a run down into the last corner. So that's going to give us quite a lot of overlap on the outside though as we come into that last corner. And I could pretty much see what was about to happen here, so we'll just break a little bit early. Let the Italian go deep and get the switch back underneath. And get plenty of momentum out of the last corner to open up a good half second as we go down the main straight here. So really all we did in this one, we bided our time. We didn't get involved in any unnecessary fights. Let people make their mistakes, let their tyres wear, then make the moves when we had a, a sort of slight advantage in car performance and we're up now into a podium position because one of the other drivers in the top three has pitted. And that was to be pretty much the end of this one. Uh, the British guy, I think his name's Mitchell, or Mitch, yeah, put us under a lot of pressure over the last lap on those fresh tyres, but never really came under any serious threat for our podium position. And we pick up a nice third place, so a slightly better result than the first race, it has to be said. Here he is finishing fifth there, I think Karif maybe had a little bit of a, a mare over the last couple of laps, I think he maybe finished down in seventh or eighth. So if that was a race where everything went right, we made all the right decisions and things just came to fail into place, this race was to be the polar opposite of that. So starting this one down in 10th place, we're in the BMW M4 for this one, and the driver that in 20th place is Tijney, one of the fastest drivers in the game in any region, and he's doing our last the first challenge in the Corvette. And uh, we're going to cross paths with Tijney a couple of times over the course of this race. So to be fair, this race didn't actually kick off too badly. We started in 10th, end of lap number 1, we're up into 8th place, courtesy of a couple of penalties, and we're firmly in the battle here for 6th and 7th. Now we've got a slipstream here down into turn number 1, you can see we break nice and early, but for some reason, the BMW just locked up and we couldn't get it turned into the first apex when we make contact with King Ears. So we do slow down on the exit of the second part of the chicane, to make sure he keeps that position, and we're further on the throttle here as we come into this right hand kink. Now you can see we leave loads of track on the right hand side for the car behind us and he is just going to swing over and leave no space for my car whatsoever and unceremoniously it puts me into the gravel. As we come back on we've got dirty tyres, we can get the throttle down, we're causing all sorts of mayhem unfortunately yeah, and I do believe through the contacts there we give a couple of drivers a penalty so I do apologise for that but really the making of the incident was not really my fault. So we'll jump forward here to lap number 3. We are in 13th position and we're going to be dived pretty rudely here by Fred in the Audi TT. Now he came from quite a long way behind. It's one of these overtakes that's very, very annoying because they're, just, they're going for it. They don't care what you're going to do. Uh, they've got no really any respect for your position on the track. Uh, they probably think they've made a good overtake, but in my opinion, you know, it's just, it's a total dive, but it's, it is what it is, you know, I'm not really particularly bothered by this race at this point anyway. This race is uh, fast going downhill. But uh, 12th place now, we're in slipstream of 
Fred in the Audi TT. Now the big problem I was having in this race is that no matter what I did, I always seemed to be getting blocked by cars on at the apex. Uh, now the BMW is not that quick down the straight, but uh, it is pretty quick in the corners, but because people just kept stopping uh, on the apexes, I could, couldn't carry the speed into the corners that I would like to. And this was happening over and over and over again in this, this car. Uh, side by side through the last corner there with Rapidity 9-9, probably about the only good bit of racing I managed in this race. Uh, and then you can see the Jag has plenty of power down the main straight, the BMW could not contend in the slightest. You can see just how much more speed we can carry through the corners, a sort of reasonable example of what was happening, we're just getting blocked on the apex, but nowhere near as good an example as this, so look how far behind the Jaguar we are, we break nice and normal, going in there to take a really nice apex, but we find the Jaguar right there, going a lot slower than us, have to come off the throttle, and that means we're compromised all the way down the straight here, now the car behind us now, in 14th is Tijni, uh, he's in the Chevrolet Corvette, very close behind us, I was pretty sure he was going to go for the move into turn number one, uh, we're not going to fight this one at all. You can see we keep it to the right hand side. And Tijni goes up the inside. And that's all well and good. Now, coming down towards the right hand kink, you can see P11 and 12 are going to go side by side for a corner. You should never go side by side with another car. It's going to force Tijni to take avoiding action. So he's on the brakes in a very unusual position off the track. I'm on the brakes here myself to avoid going into the back of him. And as we come into the braking zone, we kind of move our car slightly to the left, Tijni gets caught out by Fred and the TT, he sort of flings his car into the line of my car to try and take avoid an action and unfortunately we're going to give him a fairly like, hefty dunt in the rear end. He just about manages to collect it and not have a major accident, he is going to go off the track unfortunately. And we, for our troubles, are going to pick up a one second penalty. A little bit unfortunate, again, was I especially bothered? No, the race was going south. A vast rate of knots anyway. Now we made sure that Tijn needs to stay ahead of us now. Maybe regretting that because he's now about to have a little bit of a tete la tete with this Hungarian in an Audi TT. So I don't think he was particularly plussed by that first move by the Hungarian driver. And then if we keep an eye on them, Tijn is going to go to the right hand side and the Hungarian's going to force him off the track for a second time. So I suspect he had uh, very much had enough of that and he's going to kind of let the Hungarian know that he's not very happy with him <laughs> and deliberately take him out. And uh, I follow them off as well because I'm too busy watching what they're doing. So just another episode to kind of put down in a bad race. But we're now down in 14 position and we had that second penalty to serve, which we did. We're jumping forward here to lap number 8. We're in 12th position now and we're coming up base design or behind base design in the Audi TT. Now you can see how much we closed up on that driver over uh, turns 1 and 2. He's going to of course fight it around that kink. We give him space on the outside, unlike Cole did for us in the same circumstances. So that's how you do it, Mr Cole, if you're watching. Coming up the hill here, I mean, based down you should know we've got much better tyres here, but he's going to go for a ridiculous move down the inside into the S. He's just forced me wide. I think he realises it and backs off but in the process gives me a two second penalty. Now this race had been going just disastrously anyway, so I was too busy looking behind me to see what they were up to at that point. I didn't even see the Italian on my right hand side, so I've made contact with him and uh, cost him a couple of positions as well. So I do apologise to the Italian and uh, the Audi TT there, I think his name's Ruggio82. Now we do let base design know we're not very happy with his move. That nudge was 100% deliberate, just in case anybody's wondering. Yeah, I think Farrell deserved for a very silly move into the S's. But that was to be the end of the dramas for this one. We did bring it up over the line in 13th, immediately behind Tijni. I think Tijni had a bit of a nightmare as well. But from my experience, this race is a bit of an outlier. Most races have been pretty good, pretty clean, pretty respectful. Yeah, but you always have to expect you're going to have the occasional bad race. So I did promise you a death by chicane, and this is going to be it. So this is lap 9 of a race and you can see the top 8 cars are all jostling for position uh, as we come towards the chicane of death for the ninth time. Now this kind of happened for most laps, in general everybody kind of sorted themselves out as we came into this position of the track. I maybe exacerbate things here by kind of fighting with the Jaguar just a little bit too long. However, we do sort it out before the first part of the corner but the Audi TT just sees that as an opportunity to chuck it down the inside of my car 
makes contact with me and fires me into the barrier. Now we'll take a look at that from the Audi TT's perspective now. You might maybe see things a little bit differently when you see it from this, but I do think whatever cars are ahead in the second part of the chicane, you have to just accept you can go two by two through that corner, come off the throttle and let us all go through safely. Uh, in my opinion, the Audi TT just didn't do that, puts me into the wall and does pick up a four second penalty for their troubles. Anyway, hopefully your souls have not been claimed too often by the chicane of death. Uh, you're finding this race quite entertaining. Hopefully you found the video entertaining. That is always the aim of these daily race seat reviews. Anyway, uh, do hit that like button. Do hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, please leave a comment as well what you think about some of the incidents. And until the next video, thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.